What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be jumping into a Georgia State prison. Well, actually, it's going to be a few prisons. We're going to be jumping around, following a few different individuals. But one of the guys that we're going to be following is going to show and put into perspective just exactly how people get turned out in prison. And I wasn't expecting this, to be completely honest. I had no idea this was going to be a part of the episode. And one of my most popular videos on this channel is actually a personal story of a situation like this unfolding right in front of my eyes. So if this is the content you're into, do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. And check out my playlist with over 1,300 videos for you to start watching today. He had a total of 20 wounds on him, right? 12 of which were stab wounds, six in the front and six in the back. I had no idea I had even done this, right? And they found me guilty of felony murder and malice murder and gave me a life sentence. I mean, I've only been doing this tattoo thing for like seven, eight months or something now, you know what I mean? So. I guess, you know, it's been said that I'm I'm picking this up pretty quick. So for all y'all uh, see this on TV, they call me Yankee, go ahead and holler at me. Man, I think Homeboy went a little too deep on that star. And look, it's so small, that shit's gonna end up blending right together. All right. So Yankee, you guys know Yankee? Yeah, I know Yankee. I seen him on TV before I met him. When I seen him, I was like, oh, snap, bro, you was on, you was on, uh, 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 National Jim Brown. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, that's what's up, man. You know what I mean? Oh, so he's popular already in the cell block. He was on our previous show, I guess. But, uh, yeah, you see, inmates watch stuff like this, too. Got us a superstar. That's for the camera, Oh, man. That's the last thing you want to hear about. I'll tell you what, if I went to prison, I'd probably be hearing that left and right after all the damn content I've been pumping. But yeah, all eyes are on him. He's a movie star in the place now. It could it could put him on a radar for extortion. I'd be like, look, man, I know they're paying you pretty good for these interviews. Yeah, yeah, man. Every time the show airs, I get like a stack of mail. It's Hollywood this, movie star that, and celebrity yankee and all kind of back then you know what i mean i charged i guess typical tattoo man rates right well that's over with now now everybody knows who i am everybody wants my tattoos and now you're telling me that you want a tattoo from me because you see me on this tv show well pay for it then you know what i'm saying oh so he's saying his celebrity status has just cranked up the prices on the tats in the block one thing's for sure and two things is for certain, especially if you're not a part of an organization and you become a tattoo artist and you're good at what you do, they're going to be putting a pressure on you. You think extortion comes just through commissary? You're asked to be doing tattoos in the cell for the whole click till your fingers are nubs. i never forget, man, one of the scariest times I ever had was just because people knew I was a tattoo artist. I told this story, I'm going to tell it briefly. A gang leader came into the block and he transformed the whole thing, made it really militant. He was sending orders to get people beat up and all kinds of stuff. And uh, one day, he pulled me to the side and he was like, in, in, in short, you're going to be doing the tattoo on my back. And I ended up doing it. And there was a guy outside the cell waiting and looking out. It was almost like I was tattooing someone part of the mafia. And the tattoo, if I remember correctly, was just as treacherous as the situation. It was like this skeleton guy with a hoodie on or something. And I believe he was on a bike. Uh, holding a gun and in the other hand he had the rival gang's head in it <laughs> but it came out great and he paid me great as well i can honestly say though if i were to do it all over i never would have picked up a tattoo machine in my life i would have just gotten tattoos done because it's so stressful being a tattoo artist in prison even out in the streets man i came home doing it and everybody was hitting me up left and right i was like man just chill out He said, man, I want my arm to resemble just crazy, wacky, insane, chaotic, all kind of just whatever. And I said, well, OK, let me think. When people see the tattoos, they will automatically know that there has been some insanity. There has been some chaotic moments. You know, I have gone through worse. 
and I come out the other end. And I got goals and dreams and everything else too, you know. I would love to pursue a career in tattooing, have my own parlor someday. I remember those dreams. I had the same exact ones. Because that's all you really know when you leave prison, or at least when I did, was tattooing. And I tried to reach out to that direction. My wife, uh, when I got out that I met, I had no idea at the time. But after meeting her, she told me that her father runs a tattoo shop. Rest in peace to her father. He has passed away since then. But I went to that shop and he was about to start apprenticing me. Turns out it took a different route because I think uh, being a tattoo artist would have put a big strain on me and Brittany's relationship. It was already happening when I had to do like house visits and stuff and we were getting serious. She didn't want me doing that no more. <laughs> On the job training, man. I got unlimited skin in here, you know what I'm saying? And by the time I get out, I'm gonna have it down. That's a good way of thinking though, right? Morning, man. Morning, Warden coming Warden. in here. Man, first time he seen me, he came in the dormitory, walked the whole dormitory, got to my cell, the last cell, stopped, looked at me, and said, uh, you ain't gonna be running no tattoos in my prison. Huh. I said, all right, I got you, sir. It's not, it doesn't pay to be a celebrity in prison. Hell no. Now that's the lip liner. It was a colored pencil broke it up into smaller pieces and let it soak in that with some water. So, uh, we jumped to, uh, we jumped over to, uh, is he doing clown paint? Face paint? Clown paint? I came into prison bisexual. Ah, but in prison, you can hardly have a... Not the pink toe. Bobby. You hardly have a male and female relationship. So if you're already attracted to a man, it's only natural for you to try to find a companion in one of these inmates. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Look at those damn legs there, boy. You can't turn that down, huh? So Crow's real name it's in prison just so is much Samantha. Easier when you're in a financially stable relationship, you ain't got the stress of trying to get your habits taken care of: cigarettes, coffee, food. Costs a lot more than a honey bun. You can believe that. <laughs> as far as so homeboy's tricking, man, in prison, unreal. I told you this shit happens all the time. The inmates are concerned. We're just as close to being a female as they're gonna get. So they're not going to allow nobody to really hurt us or take advantage of us. Will you be Samantha when you leave here? <laughs> That's a hard question, to be honest. That's a hard question to answer. Will you be Samantha when you leave here? Oh, man. I told y'all a story about a guy that was known in the prisons I was in for sleeping with other men. I mean, on a regular basis. And he put it out there, he didn't care, but I seen him on the uh, oceanfront strip one night with his old lady. And if I were to guess, she had no idea what he was running through in there. But uh, you heard what Samantha said, you know, uh, he don't know if he's gonna be Samantha when he leaves. He might just keep all this behind him. Due to the fact that I've lived this lifestyle for the past four or five years now, it'd be hard to change. I don't know. I'd had to wait and see till I got out there. Mm -mm -mm. He only has six days left. He ended up checking into PC, and that's what a lot of people do right before they go home. Just to get a little bit of uh, alone time, get their mind right before uh, hitting those streets. Not to mention, if everybody knows, especially someone like him is about to leave, that's their girlfriend or whatever, sleep partner, man, they might do something to try to trick it up. Vacation coming up in two weeks, man. I won't be allowed to go to visitation. And it's supposed to be my whole family's coming. I'm supposed to be up there hugging them and kissing them and all that stuff, and ain't none of that gonna happen now, you know? So Mr. Yankee here is in the Lockdown 23 and 1 block, special housing unit, hole, whatever you like to call it, but 
I thought he might have been in here for tattoo, and it turns out the staff thinks that he took a selfie of himself with a contraband cell phone, emailed it to someone on the streets. That person printed the picture out and sent it back to him. A lot of people get their family members to do this. Maybe he wants to send the picture to a girl that he's interested in. You know, you never know what kind of pen pals he might run into in prison. And to have a photo to go with the conversation is always a plus. I personally used to just mail home my wristband. My wristband had a photo of me on it. And I would just tell staff, you know, I lost my wristband. I need a new one. They'll charge you two bucks or something like that. But still. I got a picture to the person I was trying to get a picture to. But back to this guy's situation, look, they open up the mail and go through everything. So if they open it up and see a picture of you inside of a cell, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be tricked up, man. Now, this is the picture that was sent in, and after their investigation, which only took about four hours, he was released from the shoe because it turns out this was a picture from the doc first documentary they did, and they just took the image from the web and sent it to him but they thought it was a contraband cell phone. So see how easy you get tricked up? Well, nothing more than last time I was on the show, you know, I, I turned into this Hayes celebrity and got all these letters. People started supporting me and want to send me money and look out for me and Probably some chick. I really like this picture of you. I seen it on the internet. Imagine that. You gotta beat them janks off with the bat. All the fan mail is coming his way. Oh, he's mad. Yankee ain't got time for hey, this look, shit. Though, for real, y'all, when I go back inside, man, you know, we can just pick this up another day or something. I'm blowed right now, man. I'm, I'm mad as hell. It hasn't been a bad time. I mean, yeah, I've lost my freedom. I've lost everything I owned on the street. But to me, I've had a good time in prison. If I were to guess, homeboy's probably right back in the penitentiary. After 10 years, 364 days, and 23 hours of being behind these walls, it's time for me to go home. Crazy. I remember all this stuff too well, putting on those khakis and the belt. I even remember the cuffs not coming off. They didn't have the key to get it off. They ended up having to cut them off. I've been released from prison two different times and jails numerous times. So the feeling never changes, regardless of where you're at. Great feeling, like being reborn, reborn, I swear. It'll make you look at everything totally different, man. Your whole life will be changed. How do you go? Mm-hmm. They usually give you a, a ID card of some kind, and I think you can pay for your social security card. I can't remember exactly how it happened uh, with me. I know I had some kind of identification out there, though, uh, to take the DMV and stuff like that. He's a little tight, bro. <laughs> Here you go, big dog. Leave Samantha behind, man. Leave her behind. The best time being released for me was when I was married to Brittany. And I had kids go home and look forward to that I hadn't even seen yet. I'll never forget it, man. But also, I'll never forget how they looked at me, almost like a stranger. Because I had to go about a year without visitation, man. Uh, me and Brittany got caught up having a little too much fun. <laughs> so I couldn't see my kids, man, uh, until I got out. But I'll never forget, I scooped Brittany up like a bag of potatoes. First thing I did was put two hands on those buns. And I remember I wasn't gone for no 10 years or nothing, but when uh, we got in the car and she started driving, the roads were so windy that I started getting uh, motion sickness. All kind of things going through my head. 
when I meet my family, their reaction of reuniting with my child, getting a job. He's got a kid. And get my food stamps. Food stamps. Damn. Look, when I was released, I didn't know anything about food stamps and stuff until I started going to this little, I think it was an anger management program because, you know, I had a violent charge. And that was one of the things that they made me do. And the crazy part about it is when I violated my probation, I had to do it all over again. So I took like three different separate anger management classes for the same charge. I guess it's just what happens when you violate your probation. But either way, I do remember him telling me about food stamps. I was like, there ain't no way they're going to give me free food, man. You know, because at the time we really needed it. Me and Brittany were in a rough spot, man. And, uh. I went down there, I applied for the food stamps, and I think it was like the day or two before the 4th of July. And I came out that day with like $300 in, in food stamps, right? Which, I mean, like, what, 10, 15 years ago was a good amount of money to spend in a grocery store. Now you can barely get a pack of Oreos for 300 But that's besides the point. I walked out feeling great because we could go get some food. And I said to myself, damn, get some ribs. It's almost 4th of July. Ah! On the state. Hey, y'all. I just, it's amazing. Uh, it's being free. First word out of your mouth, this institution will be served. Last word out of your mouth will be sir. Everybody First stand in. That? Sir, sir, yes, sir. No. Seven months later, I y'all was back. Things has gotten so tough out there. Within about 36 hours of being on the street, I was drinking already. Oh, man. Samantha, this is going to have to be the thumbnail. God. I started hanging out with the wrong crowd, committing crimes. Come on, let's party, Elliot. You've been locked up for so long. Now enjoy yourself. And I just let myself be pulled into it. Hey, Elliot Proud. Now, what do you think he landed himself back into the penitentiary for? If you picked stealing copper wire, you are correct. Man, oh man, I remember this guy named Buddy Love from Portsmouth. He had a funny shaped back, man. I said, man, you got a lot of scars and stuff there on your back. What happened? Said I was stealing copper from a uh, abandoned middle school. But he was on the roof, and I don't know why. Maybe there was some copper up there, but he seen some cops coming in the distance. So he got scared, and he turned around and started running. Well, it turns out that it was so dark that he said he ran right off the damn middle school roof and landed in a, like a sitting position, right? And it just crushed his whole back. But I'll never forget, he ended up getting over 20 years for all the copper that he was stealing. He had this scheme going on where he acted like a maintenance worker. And he hit up hundreds of business, abandoned houses, neighborhoods, stuff like that. They didn't care though. It's like his six or seven grand larceny, man. And, and when you get that many, you're gonna be you're gonna be seeing some football numbers. But that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode coming from the Georgia prison system. I don't know what happened to Mr. Yankee, but you know, he was very optimistic about getting out. And in case you forgot, he was sentenced to life. But if I were to guess, he's still the star of the show wherever he's at. But stay tuned on the next one. We're going to be jumping to another notorious prison. It was closed down in 2016, I believe, but it's called the Roundhouse in Illinois. Just to look at the structure of this prison was entertainment to me. So be on the lookout for that. And as always, I salute to every last one of you been supporting me since the beginning and everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound. Y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free. Thank you.